Time now for some business headlines with Charles Pellegrin. Good morning to you. Good morning. We're going to start off across the border in Germany. We're looking to Frankfurt, where the European Central Bank is set to declare later on its latest decision on interest rates. The ECB president, Mario Draghi, is expected to hold rates at their current record low, the goal being to reboot inflation as well as the economy. But the big question is whether he'll, take, he'll talk about plans for, the, for bond buying in 2017. Any plans to slow down purchases would jolt the markets. And talking about markets, uh, let's have a look at how they're faring this hour. In uh, Europe, the main indices started the session cautiously, awaiting the ECB's decision about rates and its bond bu buying program. It's a mixed performance there, uh, with uh, London uh, at a, on the flat line and uh, Frankfurt slightly up, helped by the, uh, rate, um, the earnings report from uh, Lufthansa. Uh, in Asia, the Nikkei in uh, Tokyo closed in positive territory this, on, territory, this on the back of the third presidential debate, and the Mexican peso going up against the dollar. Uh, how the peso is doing is generally a good barometer to judge Donald Trump's performance. In this case, it means Trump lost the debate. And other indices either near the flat line or slightly up. And the Brazilian central bank cut interest rates for the first time in years. That's in an effort to pull Latin America's biggest economy out of its worst recession in over a century mostly by making credit cheaper and hopefully boosting investment. Uh, analysts say they believe a longer and more aggressive rate-cutting cycle is on the horizon. Mark Thompson reports. A measure intended to enhance the chances of an elusive recovery. Brazil's central bank voted unanimously to cut its benchmark CELIC interest rate to 14 percent, around half what analysts had expected. It also anticipated that steeper cuts could be brought in if Congress presses ahead with planned austerity measures. The lower rates should aid President Michel Temer's efforts to tackle high unemployment and falling activity in the industrial and service sectors without scaring away foreign businesses. Brazil will still have very high rates, so lowering the base interest rate won't scare away international investors. They won't leave and try to find more profitable products elsewhere. Around the world, rates are very low, so Brazil will continue to be an attractive proposition. High rates of inflation have forced the central bank to hold the rate steady over the past year, leaving it with one of the highest rates among industrialized economies. Current annual inflation stands at 8.48 percent. That's expected to be reduced to 4.3 in 2017, leading to the central bank's decision. The Brazilian economy has been battered by months of political turmoil, culminating in the impeachment of former president Dilma Rousseff. Now let's look at the other business stories making headlines this Thursday. Electric car maker Tesla announced that it, all its cars from now on will have self-driving hardware included. CEO Elon Musk described it as a supercomputer in a car. It'll mostly collect data about when this technology could have caused or avoided accidents. We're still years away from cars being fully self-driving, but Tesla believes this will help the process along. And Nintendo announced on Twitter that it will be showing its first glimpse of the NX gaming system this Thursday. There's a lot of anticipation about this new console, Nintendo uh, branding it as a brand new concept. It's expected to be launched in March 2017 and rumored to be a portable handheld console with detachable controllers. All right, so we've got one final business news story, and it's uh, something that could please beer lovers uh, on the one hand, but also anger beer makers. This is an interneted, internet connected beer making robot, hard to get my tongue around that, that allows anyone to homebrew their beer. It costs $800. You just insert a sealed pack of grains and hops, and the machine takes care of the rest, including filling up a keg. The only thing you have to do is add in the yeast and then wait for a few weeks for the magic to happen on its own. It's practical, but people who are actually fond of home brewing will tell you that the pleasure of making beer yourself is that it's a complicated process and that you can mess up in so many different ways. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's a frustrating uh, experiment, home brewing, so this would uh, be a nice uh, little remedy for that. I can imagine, though, you've got like your bread maker, you've got your juicer, you've got your beer maker. 
People yeah. could become quite self-contained production it centers. It works kind of like a coffee brewing machine as well. So Interesting indeed. All right, I'm sure when it comes out, you'll be able to test it for us. Thanks very much, Charles Pellegrin there with the business news.